Port Melbourne yesterday secured themselves a week's rest with a solid victory over minor premiers Geelong. Coach David Dunbar has uh, joined us in the studio this afternoon and uh, welcome. Congratulations yesterday, Phil. I'm sorry, Phil, <laughs> David. <laughs> I've got you with your, with an, without a coaching cap on, but it must have been a great relief to, to come away with a, a victory. It was a really solid match. They kept coming at you. Yeah, look, it, uh, it was probably a bit, uh, we were all a bit edgy there the last couple of minutes when the ball was in uh, Geelong forward line, mm. but um, to the boys' credit, we, we held on and won by seven points. Great finish to the season too, finishing in fourth spot and getting that second chance as well. So uh, you must be pretty pleased with the, with the way the season went. Yeah, well, it was a, um, the last few weeks, it was a bit nerve-wracking, uh, I suppose, trying to secure that double chance. But mm. uh, when we beat Springvale down at Moorabbin, we did that and it gave us something to focus on with the finals once we got that double chance. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of yesterday's match. And you had, you've got a couple of really fabulous players really just running into some terrific form. Take, take us through some of this. This is uh, Buchanan, who in fact won the man of the match. Yeah, look, Gaiman's uh, been in good form of late, but uh, he's kicking for goal. Um, sometimes, I think last week he kicked two goals through, but uh, yesterday he was a bit more accurate, but he was, he's been in, in good form. and. Uh, yeah, he's, he's certainly he's, he's a quick player and, and he finishes very well. Mm. And you've got Scotty Stevens too, who's turning into a little champion. Yeah, Scotty um, has played a, a good role for us over the last couple of weeks. He kicked six um, last week against Sandringham and then he got five yesterday. So he's um, he's probably uh, you know in, in as good a form as you'd get. Mm. How are you finding the blend? At the, you know, the, uh, we'll talk about this more in a moment. But the, the Swans players coming in. I mean, you've got the unusual task of having. Your, your affiliated side well away from you in Sydney. Yeah, it was something that uh, I spoke to the guys about um, on Friday. As a whole club, we, we had an early training session on Friday and the Sydney Swans were down for that. And, uh, yeah, I don't think there's too many sporting organisations in Australia or even in the world where you're 700 k's apart. So mm. it's, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time and effort. But if we can continue the way we're going, I think it'll be an enormous achievement particularly by those fellows involved in it, to make it work. And Peter Philandia, really uh, very strong for you yesterday, particularly in the first half. Yeah, look, Pete uh, went into the game pretty quick, had a bad flu, and uh, we didn't know how he was going to go, how he was going to manage that, but uh, he's got a big heart, Peter. Um, and here's, take a minute to watch this goal, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was one of the goals of, 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 must have been the goal of the season, but rivaling some of the AFL goals kicked this year too. Yeah, look, he did well to hold McGrath out, who's a lot taller than him for a start, but then to, to back up again and kick wow. that goal was miraculous. Now, I mean, he, tough for him too, because we won't go through too much of the details, but a fairly sensational start for the year for him. He had to really sort of regroup and uh, I guess very disappointing for you, you know, to have your captain in that position at the start of the year. Yeah, look, it was... Um, the first couple of days when that occurred, um, obviously it made a lot of news and there was a lot of pressure on Peter and he handled himself pretty well, I, I thought, um, considering the, the amount of publicity that it achieved. But, um, yeah, he's, he's put all that behind him and uh, he's a leader, a strong leader for us and he was terrific yesterday. And to Port's credit, you obviously sat down and talked about it and you could have taken fairly strong disciplinary action, but you looked... Be above and beyond and saw the qualities that he did have. Yeah, um, at Port Melbourne, I suppose, we really got behind Peter and supported him as much as we possibly could. Um, he went through a fair bit, as I say, mm. through the media. He got a 10-week suspension, but all along the way, he threw himself into his coaching and worked on his fitness, and all he wants to do now is play footy and play well. And it's, so it's, uh, and it's coming through good at the end, yeah, the second half right. of the season. And we, we've got a young side, and, mm. and Peter's a leader there that we need, and uh, you get 110% on the ground with Peter every time. Which is terrific. He had some high profile player, well one in particular at the start of the year too. I mean is that a bit of a circus for you when Tony Lockett came into play at Port Melbourne? There was so much publicity surrounding. I think everyone remarked as he arrived at the ground in a stretch limo. Something a little different for VFL. Yeah. Uh, look we, uh, we spoke as a group before Tony came down. There was probably uh, the week before it looked like he may play. So I, I talked it through with the group just to put the boys at ease a bit and just let them know that he was just another footballer when it's all said and done and we had to do the right thing by him and make him welcome and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, on that particular day when he came down to play against Werribee, it was pretty much a fairy tale end to the game where we came from behind and Tony Lockett had played and kicked four goals and there was a lot of people there. So it was 
huge for the VFL, huge for our club. But um, he must have been a bit of, uh, of a distraction when you were trying to talk to the boys. Did you find? Um, a lot of the guys, our guys, the Port Melbourne fellas, had to sort of take him up one by one and introduce him to Tony Lockett. And mm. Tony himself is a pretty shy sort of fella, so mm. he, uh, he just met them one by one and they shook hands and yeah, they went, you know, from there. But uh, he's um, a tremendous, you know, uh, Influence, player. Yeah, yes. a tremendous player for the game and to have him pull on the Port Melbourne jumper was great. Yeah, just terrific. How how are you finding the coaching position? Of course, this is your third year as uh, senior coach and having done a, a bit of an apprentice, apprenticeship at uh, Port before moving to the, to the Hawthorne side? Yeah, um, we we have uh, gone through a bit of a change, I suppose, over the last few years. We At the end of 2000, we made some decisions on players and moved a few on and a few left. and. We just basically have gone through a development program with young guys mm. and uh, last year we didn't know where we would finish but um, with the young fellas they improved uh, quickly and we just finished a game outside the, the eight last year and uh, this year we've probably exceeded where we thought we would be but it's been a ter terrific effort by the young fellas to work the way they have and get and themselves it, to It's always tricky way. to manage those sort of expectations when you get a little bit further than you perhaps wanted to or thought you might, then you've got to manage their expectations but also let them understand that it's not easy to get to play finals footy. Yeah, and I think the, the good thing about yesterday was we had our reserves in and we had our senior side in and um, they've gone into a, a final as a young group for the first time mm. and we've won. Mm. So at least now it's not as if we've had to play for four years or whatever to get into a final, find out what it's like, lose and all that type of thing. We've gone in now um, after uh, two years and won a final and these guys now know what it takes. Great so, experience. Yeah, good experience. Before we cross back out to Tia Goval and uh, have Drew and Phil join us in our discussion with David, let's uh, update the AFL matches underway and it's a very close tussle. Well, it was when I looked a little while ago between the Kangaroos and the West Coast, but West Coast pulling away a little. The Kangaroos with David King has four of their ten goals. Drew Petrie has two of their ten as well. For the West Coast, Troy Wilson and Phil Matera, the only multiples with two each. The other AFL match just underway, Carlton with one behind Essendon, well out of their starting blocks, 3-5-23. And in the other VFL match of the day, of course, the second elimination final between Williamstown and Murray Kangaroos. Pretty close, just two behinds, the difference between the two, 21 to 19. Let's go back out to Tiak Oval before we wrap up with David uh, to perhaps uh, give the boys a chance to pose a, a few questions to David and, and he's a happy man with a bit of a week's rest coming up, boys. Yes, well, Beverly, I, I have got a question. David, well done. I thought it was terrific. 14 Port players yesterday and if you were just in a nutshell, tactically, what was the big message before the game? in terms well, of the strategies to win the game? Because it was there were a lot of big players in that Geelong side, but you did really well. I thought your balance was great. Yeah, I think um, the key to Geelong this season has been their tall forward line. So we really had to apply a lot of uh, midfield pressure to um, make sure the delivery wasn't as good as it probably has been. And then with our back line, the boys really had to work hard to make sure they've got a fist on it, got it to the ground, and we got our support down there. So. Look, the, the thing was, the, the 22 blokes were pretty determined to do well yesterday and uh, we got off to a good start and um, they just kept the pressure up for four quarters. Who's Have you put Philandia in cotton wool? <laughs> yeah, we will. Uh, I was, you know, he, he was pretty crook during the week and uh, with, yeah. with the flu and the, the doctors and physios came to me at half time and said he was two thirds spent then so we knew we had to yeah. rest him up along the way but uh, yeah, he'll have a pretty light week this week. David, who do you think the side to beat? In, the, in this final series? Oh, I think it's pretty even. Anyone yeah. can win it on any day. So, I mean, after this weekend, there'll be six teams left. So, any one of those six can win it. There's, you know, it's every week's Anyone's different. Anyone's game. Yeah. David, thank you so much for coming in and good luck with the rest of the series. Pleasure. David Dunbar, the coach of Port Melbourne. Boys, back to you. And as you said, uh, perhaps Coburg still have got a fighting chance. 